a proposal for forming a link between clinical psychologists and legal authorities with regard to school shootings and subsequent firearm purchases. By David W. Friendsley, M.A. Hello everyone, as a licensed senior psychological examiner, this is a license issued in Tennessee and the scope of practice is the same as a clinical psychologist, I have given a great deal of thought to this proposal. My experience involves having conducted thousands of psychological evaluations. These evaluations include evaluating hundreds of juvenile delinquents through various contracts with the Tennessee Department of Children's Services formerly known as the Tennessee Department of Youth Development when I first provided contractual services for these youth. I apologize up front for the length of this presentation, but this issue is not a simple one. Please provide any feedback either directly in the comments or email me, delump at yahoo.com, with any questions, comments, or concerns. I will not enter into a dialogue with regard to gun laws, as this is a separate debate. Before entering my proposal, I would like to introduce two diagnostic areas of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, DSM-5, that relate to my proposal. Please note that these criteria are offered as behavioral indicators of troubled youth and not for diagnostic purposes. Diagnosis should be made only by a qualified licensed mental health professional. The first is conduct disorder. The following criteria are required to receive this diagnosis. A. A repetitive and persistent pattern of behavior in which the basic rights of others or major age-appropriate societal norms or rules are violated, as manifested by the presence of at least three of the following 15 criteria in the past 12 months from any of the categories below, with at least one criterion present in the past six months. Aggression to people and animals, 1. Often bullies, threatens, or intimidates others. 2. Often initiates physical fights. 3. Has used a weapon that can cause serious physical harm to others, for example, a bat, brick, broken bottle, knife, gun. 4. Has been physically cruel to people. 5. Has been physically cruel to animals. 6 has stolen while confronting a victim, for example, mugging, purse snatching, extortion, armed robbery. 7. Has forced someone into sexual activity. Destruction of property. 8. Has deliberately engaged in fire setting with the intention of causing serious damage. 9. Has deliberately destroyed others' property, other than by fire setting. Deceitfulness or theft, 10. Has broken into someone else's house, building, or car. 11. Often lies to obtain goods or favors or to avoid obligations, in other words, cons others. 12. Has stolen items of non-trivial value without confronting a victim, for example, shoplifting, but without breaking and entering, forgery. Serious violations of rules. 13. Often stays out at night despite parental prohibitions, beginning before age 13 years. 14. Has run away from home overnight at least twice while living in the parental or parental surrogate home, or once without returning for a lengthy period. 15. Is often truant from school, beginning before age 13 years. B. The disturbance in behavior causes clinically significant impairment in social, academic, or occupational functioning. c. If the individual is age 18 years or older, criteria are not met for antisocial personality disorder. The second diagnostic area is antisocial personality disorder in which the adult meets the following criteria. a. A pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others, occurring since age 15 years, as indicated by three, or more, of the following. 1. Failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviors, 
as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest. 2. Deceitfulness, as indicated by repeated lying, use of aliases, or conning others for personal profit or pleasure. 3. Impulsivity or failure to plan ahead. 4. Irritability and aggressiveness, as indicated by repeated physical fights or assaults. 5. Reckless disregard for safety of self or others. 6. Consistent irresponsibility, as indicated by repeated failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. 7. Lack of remorse, as indicated by being indifferent to or rationalizing having hurt, mistreated, or stolen from another. b. The individual is at least age 18 years. c. There is evidence of conduct disorder with onset before age 15 years. d. The occurrence of antisocial behavior is not exclusively during the course of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. It is evident that these criteria are behaviorally based. However, formal psychological evaluation also reveals a distinctive pattern of sociopathic or psychopathic cognitive, thinking, and perceptual, how a person sees the world characteristics that can only be objectively and subjectively identified by a clinical psychologist. The combination of both the CD behaviors, particularly those of Part A, sections 1 to 7, and sociopathic or psychopathic perceptions, or other mental disorder that distorts a youth's perception of reality, would place the youth at a greater risk of violence. Also, there is a distinct overlap in diagnostic criteria between a conduct disorder. CD, and an antisocial personality disorder, ASPD. Thus, these behavioral and psychological traits are evident in childhood and adolescence and then carry over into adulthood. With this in mind, every child or teenager who comes to the attention of legal or school authorities for any behavior that falls under Part A. Sections 1 to 7 of the CD diagnosis area must be evaluated by a clinical psychologist to determine the presence or absence of the sociopathic or psychopathic cognitive and perceptual traits, or other mental illness, such as bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, post traumatic stress disorder, etc., as these traits will eventually evolve into a sociopathic or psychopathic ASPD adult without intervention. This evaluation would also identify any other mental illness, which in addition to CD, places the youth at even a greater risk to society. If these cognitive and perceptual traits are evident, mandatory involvement with a trained mental health professional in either individual, group, and or family therapy is required of the child or teen and their parents or guardians. Insurance companies will be mandated to cover such evaluation and therapy. The child or teen is then placed on a registry barring him or her from buying a firearm. Once the child or teen reaches age 18 and wishes to buy a legal firearm, he or she must undergo psychological evaluation by a clinical psychologist to rule out the presence of the cognitive and perceptual traits consistent with APSD. If evaluation confirms the presence of these traits, the person continues to be legally barred from buying a firearm. If the evaluation does not confirm these traits, there is a one-year waiting period, and another evaluation is performed. If cleared, the individual is then permitted to buy a firearm. Of course, if the individual is convicted of any felonious crime as an adult, this will continue to bar them from being able to buy a firearm. In this case, a psychological evaluation will not be necessarily required. Lastly, if the person is not a U.S. citizen, the individual cannot possess or buy a firearm. Every public school will establish an anti-bullying and befriending committee, ABC. The mission of the ABC will be identifying and referring children who display bullying behavior, and or students who have made a threat of violence in verbal or written form. These youth will be required to undergo the above-mentioned psychological evaluation. The committee will also identify students who show an inability to form meaningful and lasting relationships with peers and or teachers. 
These youth are typically vulnerable to being bullied and can become isolated and predisposed to eventually committing violent acts without intervention. The ABCs of middle and high schools will include a few, higher functioning, socially stable students as members, along with designated school staff that involve the principal, or principal designee, school psychologist, school counselor, school nurse, local law enforcement representative, and a licensed mental health professional from the community. Students who fall within this subgroup will be afforded group and or individual counseling within the school setting. Another intervention will be the assignment of a well-adjusted peers to serve as a friends and role models for the individual, the befriending component. Regular ABC meetings will be scheduled to evaluate progress and needs of each referred student. The End Thank you for watching.